Welcome to Carlton Town TV on uh, on Christmas Day. Uh, Gary, thank you for coming down again. Uh, you know, it's uh, always good to do this annual catch up. Uh, it's also great for you to take time out on such an important day of the year. Yeah, no problem, Josh. You know, I won't take my presents yet again. Well, I, that was going to be my first thing I asked you about, but yeah. I'll tell you what I'll ask you about instead because it has been quite a quite a year for you here at Carlton. Um, Second season, yeah. Yeah, tell me what you've been up to across across uh, the year. Well, you know, we had a great season last year, didn't we? We were not senior cup. It was just was out of the playoffs. Yeah, I thought we did deserve to get in. To be honest with you, uh, went to the wire last day. Um, then it was a busy summer. Obviously, getting sponsorships in again. It was always going to be harder in your second season. I thought it would always be harder, uh, especially with the. Um, there's not a lot of money around this year. Uh, the, the price increases and food and people are struggling. Um, we had to get the player sponsorships in. And then uh, I found it more difficult to be honest with you this year to get sponsorships because it, 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 there's a tight squeeze on money. You know, a lot of, there's not a lot of money about at the moment. You know, pro, the price hikes and everything, the price of food, the cost of living, it's nearly doubled. So I know it's always been a difficult season, but we have done too bad to be honest with you. We've been happy helpers, so I've got to give credit to all the people around me as usual, like Graham, Calvin Kerry, uh, Mick Garton, and all the rest of the committee. So we, we, we haven't done bad, you know. Keeping sticking in there, and obviously that kind of work, and I'm sure everyone around the clubs appreciates this. Is is then what kind of converts uh, to to us on the pitch? And like you said, obviously uh, you know just missed out on the playoffs, but a couple of great achievements. Talk me through some of the highlights for you last, last well, season. The highlight last season was winning the not senior cup. You know, I know it's a team effort. You know, with a committee, we're all we're all sort of one. So no, there's no group an individual that stands out. You know, it's all about our team, and uh, to win that in the first season, being on board, I was absolutely thrilled. You know, absolutely thrilled to win that. You know, with the chairman and the rest of the committee, your dad, your good self. You know, it's been on that pitch and touch the court. You know, we beat Nottingham Forest in the semi-final, the 23, the strong Forest team down here. You know, under Andy Reid and Dave Rogers. Uh, then we beat Mansfield in the final, a strong Mansfield team. You know, I thought it was a great achievement, an absolutely fantastic achievement. To win some silverware in your first season on board at a football club, you can't beat it, can you? I was thrilled. Um, and you look at that and you say being on the pitch and all that and like the kids running on yeah, um, yeah. and stuff like that, uh, like and, and the squad in general, it just seemed like there was a real uh, uh, togetherness. togetherness, togetherness that's right, yeah, there's a good, great team spirit with Tommy, the managers, and Mark Harvey, everyone behind the scenes as well, you know, Phil Jennings, yeah, from the tea lady downwards, you know, from, from Jamie in the bar. It's a great team, it's a great club, it's, it's, it's all a team effort. And uh, to win some silverware, it was fantastic. And all the kids on the pitch at the end, you know, Tomo, uh, Madison, uh, uh, Madison gave a tie in his shirt when we won it. You know, the, the players gave the shirt to all the kids. It was fantastic, wasn't it? Winning at base with United. We took a good crowd as well, didn't we? So yeah. the atmosphere was great. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. You know, let's hope we can do it again this season. Yeah, it was a cracking season. Um, and like you said, like, like I said, a lot of work. The money you raise goes into that, but it's not just that you raise money for. Obviously, the club and yourself, um, you know, raised uh, money for charity last year as well. Particularly, um, thinking you know, uh, relevant to modern times would be that match yeah. for Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, the, the match for Ukraine. Uh, obviously, with Taz involved in it, and we had that down here, and then we had a, a dual day, didn't we? We had it at the Irish club up at St Anne's. I think they raised about fifteen thousand pounds between both both the club and uh, the Irish community. Fantastic achievement again, you know. You know, we we we, we, do, we do loads of events down here, don't we? Helping on different charities. We had our charity event again this uh, this May, uh, end of the season. Um, obviously, it didn't um, emulate last year because it was the first game out of COVID. But we still raised a few grand for the club and, and various charities. For uh, world game changes again, yeah. and then they help out with Carlton Town as well. Some of that money comes back into Carlton Town, some of it goes to help other causes, great causes. Then we do the food banks, uh, we do a few food banks this season again for people in need in the inner city with, with, with uh, Gendlin and Neverfield Borough Council. Yeah, so, we, we've obviously got the one tomorrow. Uh, yeah, we've got one. Yeah, 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 we've got one tomorrow, another food bank for the Neverfield Food Bank, which is for a great cause, especially this time of year again. And people get fed, you know what I mean, underprivileged families. And we have not even School of Boxing down here a few times this year again. Um, underprivileged kids and uh, 
we've got various people who sponsor that event and then we can have kids as mascots and never get to uh, experience that experience, have that experience you know, and work out the teams and that. That's another good thing we do down here. So yeah, well I mean uh, it's something obviously we're both very proud of the club for and the, the partnerships we form, um, be that charitably or, or with local businesses or with other clubs and, and what I wanted to touch on is because I know you're a bit of a fan of an away day, uh, would be at the start of the season, obviously, Merthyr, uh, a club now yeah, where yeah, we've got a good relationship with. Talk to me about that day. Yeah, this was formed, uh, Johnny Owen. Merthyr wanted a friendly up in the Nottingham area and Johnny Owen uh, mentioned it and then uh, he contacted Mick Garton and uh, Merthyr came up last, last, not this summer, just got the summer before, uh, they came up here. Uh, and the last day, we all took alternating every year. We went to Murphy last summer. Um, that was a great event again. All, we took the team down there. Daryl Claypole helped out with the expenses. Um, it was another good team effort. We did uh, Daryl's charity, uh, Brain Tumor. Yeah, research, we, yeah. yeah, Brain Tumor Research. And we did all that. We raised a lot of funds for Daryl's charity, Brain Tumor Research. Murphy Town helped out with that tremendously as well. Did a lot of uh, running and all that stuff down there. That was a great away day. We went for two nights and the players went over had a night out in Murphy. What great people they are down there. And then it's their turn to come up to us next summer. So that's a great, and, then and uh, Paul Lowe of World Game Changers, he's gonna have a cup made out and then 500 pounds gonna go to a charity. Whoever wins the cup that year is gonna 500 pounds go to a charity, their choice local charity. So that's an incentive for the teams to win, yeah. keep winning the cup. That's, what, that's a brainchild of Paul Lowe. Uh, World Game Changes, who's, who's, who's very involved with Carlton Town. Yeah, no, I, look, that, I mean, that relationship with Merth is, you know, going really oh, well. It's unique, no, it's unique. Uh, I mean, they're, they're a world famous football club, Merth Murph Town. They played Atalanta in the Cupman's Cup court final and beat them at, at Merth in the late, in the, in the mid 80s. And, um, and did all right in the, uh, and, uh, yeah. like right now in the, yeah, and the, the FA, FA Cup. Cup. Yeah, we went to the FA Cup to book the books in the way the other week. With Johnny, we took a minibus from Nottingham, and Murphy took 500 fans. They only narrowly lost. They should have, they should have got a yeah. result, really. They went out. The first round of the FA Cup proper, fantastic achievement. They're a big club, Murphy, and we've got a, a good relationship with them now. Speaking of away days, um, and well, something that could be view, viewed as negative or positive. Um, obviously, moving on to this season, uh, totally new league. Um, now, with that comes. Lots of new grounds, which are always quite fun to go and see. Obviously, yeah. with it also comes problems such as, uh, you know, raising the funds to get there uh, for some of the more northern teams. Uh, like that must make your job a bit harder. But also, you know, you must have enjoyed a few of these away days. Like any yeah, like, yeah, I mean, it's new grounds for us. I mean, I do enjoy a good away day, and I've got a lot of friends up in the northeast. Um, so a lot of these grounds I've been going to, I've had people meet us and it, it, it's one of the most friendliest areas in the country. Um, it's been hard though on the players, um, it, the, the um, away travel's gone up from four grand to about 11 grand this season so we've had to raise more money. It's been hard work, you know, we've had more buses laid on, I think there's like 11 bus trips away and it's a thousand pound every bus trip. Like last year, you know, we, I think we had six away trips, and you know, there's less money on the coaches. Obviously, with the it, uh, cost of living gone up as well, the coaching, the fuel's gone up, the yeah. fuel price rises. It's been a hell of a hell of a struggle. So uh, it's, it's been worse on the team as well. Yeah, I think you can tell by the, some of the results this season. You know, we've lost a few up in the northeast, and uh, it's it's three hours, it's six hour round trip. It's it's hard on the players, you know, and. Uh, I don't know, it's been, it's been a difficult season going up to the North East. We shouldn't have been put in that league, we should be in the Midlands League. You know, and the furthest away trip last year was so arranged at Cambridge City, which is only two hours away. Yeah. You know what I mean? We went to Dunstan the other week, it was a late night, you know, it was half past nine before we got back to the ground. It's a long day, isn't it? You know, you're leaving at half past nine in the morning, it's a 12 hour shift. You know, the players have got to play football in between. Yeah. So. Well, and, uh, you know, with the price of living, the beers, yeah. you've got to finish on the way up and the way Well, no, I've got to drink more beer this season. It's <laughs> unfortunate, unfortunate, right, you know what I mean? But uh, someone's got to do it, so... On a more positive thing with this season, obviously we've currently, uh, you know, the senior cups going OK. We could... Uh, yeah, yeah, we're back, we're in the sem back in the semi-final again, aren't we? We've done, had a good run in the cup again. Um, I'm not sure what the draw is yet, but it'd be nice to get Forrest again down here in the semi-final, get an 800 crowd like last season. Get a bit of money in, that'll help, help the course. Um, get to the final again. We'd love to get Forest in the semis. I think the Gavin Town's got them at home in the quarters. I think it might be uh, 
soon. I know it's, yeah, I saw the Gavin manager the other day up to the Plainsman. They said they let me know when it is, so I wouldn't mind with that actually. But yeah, that's uh, we, well, that's, I don't want to say Forrest is going to be Gavin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll be Gavin, because Gavin are our neighbours, so, you know, no disrespect to Gavin Town. Right. Yeah, well, fingers crossed it's always a, a good day down here. Yeah. Uh, speaking of good days away from Carlton, um, your lad, uh, Charlie, um, we had a specifically good day, didn't he? Uh, and yeah. uh, I believe that led to quite a few good things that came off the back of that. Uh, yeah, amazing. Um, I think that happened about March this year. Um, in the quarter final of the cup, um, it was, uh, there were 2 0 up. Then it went 2 2, and everyone was, you know, about five or something, and it looked like it was going to extra time on penalties, actually. And uh, I got the camera out, uh, we got a corner last minute, and I, obviously, not bearing in mind, I was going to film Charlie, got the camera out, I thought, if you get a last minute winner, they'll go bar me, you know, they'll go bar me. Anyway, the ball, I kept the camera rolling, the ball come out into Charlie's off, and he come out just outside his 18 year old, or yard box. I know he could hit it, so I kept the camera rolling, because the second goal, he did the same thing, and the keeper saved it, I sent the forward, tapped it in. He went straight away straight over the keeper's head, top corner from his own half. Uh, one last minute, three two. Managed to get to the final, but uh, the dream ended in the final. Got beat, but uh, it went absolute crackers on social media because uh, it was a Sunday morning. The Forest played Liverpool in the FA Cup that day, so I shot. And Johnny Owen was doing uh, Talksport live at the navigation, so I shot straight down there. And anyway, I was talking. I know a few people at Talksport, and I, was, I said, "Look at this! What Charlie's done this morning." I didn't think a lot of it. The sun was shining through the window, so you couldn't really see it yeah. on, the, on the camera. So anyway, I sat down in the nap, had a pie, and I thought, "Well, I bang this on Facebook." So I put it on Facebook. Obviously, I had some Liverpool mates down that day, so I ended up on the razzle with them all day. The time I got in, I'm already got Monday off work, thinking to beat Liverpool in the yeah. quarter semi final of the cup. I had the Monday off. But anyway, I, I checked my phone Monday morning when I woke, and it, it got absolutely been all, been all. It's every every TV station. And every uh, media channel in the world wanted a piece of him. Uh, a few days later, he's on Soccer AM, he's on every radio station, uh, Claudia Winkleman's show, he's on the uh, national BBC News, Breakfast News, every news channel you can think of it. Well, 1.4 million viewers worldwide. Had ESPN from America get in touch. It went absolutely crackers. All of a sudden, he, all of a sudden he's, a, he's a bit of a film star. That must be uh, pretty incredible to, to go on soccer and to... Oh, it was amazing. To, I mean, I, was more, I think I was more excited than that. <laughs> yeah. right. But yeah, it was great. They, they took us down to London. We had two days in London. Took us down on the train. He met uh, Jimmy Bollard. Uh, everyone was great at soccer and yeah, Brilliant. Everyone looked after him. The experience of his life, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's how they've been bigger and better things to come. Right. Talks about it. Yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed. Well, it's, he's had a busy year, but so have you. Um, you obviously you did a podcast down at the ground. Um, yeah. You've had your your football Italian ninety documentary. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know that was uh, must be pretty uh, cool. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a hectic year again. Yeah, they got in touch because they, obviously the World Cup was happening last this month, and uh, they was doing a documentary on Italian ninety, and I knew I was there, so they, uh, I did a three part uh, doc, drama, uh, documentary with them. That was good fun doing that. Took me up to Liverpool. Um, that was pretty good. Uh, then uh, James English got in touch, went on his podcast, which is the biggest podcast in Britain. Uh, so that was a, we did it at Cop Town Ballroom. So that was pretty good as well. Pretty cool doing that. So yeah, it's been a busy year all round. So there's more stuff happening, more stuff happening as well in the future. So and uh, and speaking of a, a busy year, um, your other love uh, would be Forest. Oh yeah, um, yeah. And that got a, a little bit busy this year. Uh, it'd be a shame not to touch on that. And uh, yeah, back yeah. In the Premier. yeah. We, we all went down uh, back in the Premier League for the playoff final. Come from nowhere really. Bottom of the league last October, uh, Christmas, we were challenging for the playoffs and just went a roller coaster, didn't we? We thought it was going to go up automatically at one point. Went to Bournemouth and we lost 1 0, took Charlie. Uh, took me down to Wembley, it was an absolutely amazing experience. That was probably the best Forest game I've ever been to in my life. But forget all the uh, winning the trophies at Wembley in the past. To have your boy there, we were 12, and he, he, he was crying on emotion at the end. And to win at Wembley for 23 years. And Forest take all them fans here. I mean, we still have nine or like forty thousand here. We had two or three in the other field, and you know we could have sold, we could have sold out one day that yeah. day. It was absolutely amazing. You know, I know you, all you guys were all there. We, we all met up and had a drink and that. But what an experience seeing that Forest get back to the Premier League. Um, yeah, I mean that day was was incredible, and, and we've had we've had some more since, obviously as well. Some of the like as much as the Prem was always going to be tough. Yeah, yeah, like, we've been, been, been tough, but we've got a new team, haven't we? 
Um, basically, we've had 23, 26 new players, whatever it is, but we've had about 22 go out. Um, so Steve Cooper's been landed with a whole new ball game, whole new team. But I think we're finding his feet now. I think you'll see we we'll stay up. I think we'll all stay up. So we had a bit of form just before the World Cup. I went to Valencia the other day and played well in Valencia. I beat them, top Spanish team. I think we'll stay up. Our own form gets over the line with the crowd behind us. The crowd's a 12th man. Not many yeah. teams uh, come down here and have a forest. We've lost a couple. Lost a couple of games. We shouldn't have lost to Bournemouth, Fulham. But uh, they finished above us last season, so you know what I mean? Everyone said they their own bankers, but they actually finished above us last season. Yeah. So you know what I mean? But uh, we are finding our form at home. I think we'll be all right. We'll stay up. Well, fingers crossed. Um, now it's time for the shameless plug uh, of uh, the interview. Because obviously, being Christmas Day, I don't want to want to keep you for, for long. Well, I, I, um, I was hoping you had your Man City Christmas jump on this year. Well, Where's that gone? Is I was... I was the bin? No, no. Beat us 6 no, no, well, I'm not... Uh, I don't want to offend you because of that. Yeah, because so, you beat us 6 and, uh, yeah. and, and on February 9th, I also, you know, I might put it away for that as, uh, as well. But um, I I, I've got to not offend the, the chairman for, for that one, so I'm uh, yeah, okay. going with it. Oh, yeah, 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 OK. Uh, but, uh, yeah, shameless plug time. Uh, and unfortunately, it wasn't out in time for today. But um, you've got your book coming out with uh, with Paul Lowe. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just tell tell the guys about it. So uh, yeah, when uh, it's coming out, what it's about. We was uh, me and Paul's away. Well, actually, Paul spoke about it. It's Paul Paul's idea. Paul's baby. We spoke about it during COVID, and would it be nice to do a, a book about after uh, I saw the troubles and trials back in the day when we were kids, we're both Nottingham lads go near each other and uh, Paul's done a lot of good for charity work uh, at my work at Wickham Town and various charities and Paul's charity we thought we'd be nice to do a, an after book like rather than the first books we did which was more about the way we, we was misguided or whatever you know we was, went off the path anyway it comes out February the 4th I think it is we, we put it together it goes to print probably next week I think it is uh, 70,000 words, um, it's going to come out in all back to start off with, at £20, we're going to do a book launch down at Carlton Town, February time or March, well probably February time, um, all the proceeds are going to charity and Carlton Town, so you know, we're, doing it, we're not making a penny ourselves off it, it's all going to help Carlton Town, especially towards all the travel costs this season. Yeah, yeah. Also I want to say a big thank you to the Irish branch uh, in Ireland when we went over in um, August, I think it was, or yeah. September, and uh, they raised a lot of good money over the, over the Forest Irish Munster branch. They raised uh, three different charities in Ireland. They chose grassroots football. They chose Carlton Town this year and gave us a, a prize of two thousand pounds, which helped towards our travel costs this year. Yeah, which is fantastic, you know, from them, the Irish fans. Well, uh, um, like you just said, uh, thanks to those boys, and also that gives you no excuse not to buy that book. It's helping us all out as well. Yeah. Um, but. Guys, look, I'll I'll let you.